Governor Daniels brings to the state's top elected office a blend of experience and is remarkable in elected official. He has served in both public and private in a successful career that began in Indiana. Governor Daniels graduated from North Central High School in 1967 and was recognized that year by then President Lyndon Johnson as a presidential scholar, given as an award to the state's top male high school graduate. He received his bachelor's degree from Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs at Princeton University in 1971 and completed his law degree in 1979 at Georgetown University. Governor Daniels joined the staff of Richard G. Luger, then mayor of Indianapolis, helping him to an election as senator from Indiana, and he moved to Washington with Senator Luger to be part of his staff. In 1983, Governor Daniels became executive director of the National Republican Senatorial Committee and served as a key figure in ensuring his party maintained its majority status in the 1984 elections. In 1985, Governor Daniels joined President Ronald Reagan's White House staff as a senior advisor. Two years later, he switched gears and went to work in the private sector. First as CEO of the Huston Institute, an internationally renowned think tank for public policy issues, and in 1990, joined Eli Lilly and Company as head of its North American pharmaceutical operation. In 2001, Governor Daniels returned to the White House to serve as the director of the Office of Management, of Management and Budget for President George W. Bush, a position he left in 2003 to become a full-time governor, a full-time candidate for governor of Indiana. He earned that office in 2004 by tirelessly crisscrossing the state in his mobile campaign RV and eating more pork tenderloins than most of us can even imagine. He was re-elected to the same office in 2008. As governor, Daniels was named Public Official of the Year in 2008 by the magazine Governing and received the Manhattan Institute's 2008 Innovator Award for his creative public policy initiative. His accomplishments in this first day as governor include the creation of the Public-Private Indiana Economic Development Corporation and the creation of the state's Office of Management and Budget, which helped him engineer the state's first balanced bu budget in eight years. Governor Daniels has placed an emphasis on performance measure, measure, excuse me, measurements in agencies such as the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, the Department of Child Services, and the Department of Corrections to improve the delivery of vital state services. In his efforts to strengthen Indiana's workforce and attract jobs and investment in our state, he has been an advocate for science and mathematics education in Hoosier classrooms. And when it comes to biofuels and clean coal technology, the governor has moved our state from the back of the pack to the national forefront. In 2007, he oversaw the enactment of the Healthy Indiana Plan to provide health care coverage for uninsured Hoosier adults and a sweeping reform of the state's property tax system. Both these measures received bipartisan support. I would now like to read the following citation. In recognition of notable achievement in the pharmaceutical industry and exceptional public service in Washington, D.C., and as governor of the state of Indiana, the Board of Trustees of Rose Holman Institute of Technology presents on this 30th day of May, 2009, Mitchell E. Daniels, Jr., for the highest award of the Institute, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. of your accomplishments and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Rose Holman Institute of Technology, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. As a token of this honor, I will present you with this diploma, while Acting Chairman of our Board of Trustees, Bill Fenolio, will invest you with the hood appropriate for the degree. Daniels, congratulations. We are honored that you are our commencement speaker today. Governor Daniels, the honest is yours. By your leave, I'll remove this before it falls off on its own. I know what you're thinking. How strange. Politicians' heads are supposed to be too big. President, trustees, graduates, families, friends of this remarkable institution. Public speaking comes with my current job. 
There are speeches I'm eager to give, some I give out of duty. There are two kinds I try my best to duck. Eulogies and commencements. <laughs> On these occasions, the audience's thoughts are almost certainly elsewhere, and the chances of saying anything remotely memorable or original are, well, remote. Today's an exception. There's no way to tell you why that won't sound ingratiating. I am just an unabashed, vocal admirer of this institution, its standards, its record of results, and the nature of its academic offerings. I just couldn't say no to Rose. I love telling visitors about your 10 straight years at the top of the U.S. News and World Report rankings. I love bumping into your student service. bumping into your students or recent grads and being dazzled by what they know and the things they can do. Amid great inflation, dumbed-down SAT tests, and stagnant academic performance across most of American education, you chose the harder path. Your self-esteem was hard-earned, not conferred as an exercise in social work. If any graduates in America today ready for the tough world of a prolonged recession, you are. I often pose to friends a trivia question. Name three mythical creatures never actually found in the natural world. To which the answer is Sasquatch, the Loch Ness Monster, and an unemployed Rose Holman graduate. <laughs> My admiration for the graduates is matched by that I feel for you parents. Your own commitment to education, not to mention your personal sacrifices, is being rewarded this morning. Someone should give you a diploma, too. In our effort to elevate appreciation for academic rigor, and for math and science specifically, I inaugurated two awards. A friend once said, in frustration. Every Hoosier knows who Mr. Basketball is, but nobody knows who the best math student is. Two months later, we named the first Mr. Math along with the first Ms. Science. Backstage with the parents of Mr. Math, I learned that he was among seven all-star scholars that family had produced. And when I remarked rather lamely that they must have truly valued education in their household, the father confided in me that in 35 years of marriage, they had never owned a television. I love to shock high school audiences with this story. When I explained that some of us thought we were big shot parents just for limiting TV time, the mom blushed and said, well, now tell him the whole truth, dear. We did rent one a couple times for the Super Bowl. I know there are graduates here today with enough God-given ability to have made it to and through Rose Holman from any background, but I am certain that many tassels will only switch sides today because on hundreds of nights, you moms and dads said, no, you can't, or turn it off, or not until your homework's done. God bless you for that. I'll bet you folks in the tassels agree. celebrate today not just the discipline you have demonstrated, but also the disciplines to which you have applied it. America has all the lawyers and psychologists and financial experts we could stand. It's engineers and scientists and mathematicians we desperately need. As recent events have reminded us, prosperity begins not with moving money around, but with making things and building things, which means someone has to be good at inventing and improving things. 